Hello, hello, everybody, and welcome to Celebrate with L.A. Williams. My name is L.A. Williams, and I am so honored to bring to you this very, very special episode. Today, we are celebrating the one and only Mr. Charles Randolph Wright. Charles, yes, how sir. are you, my friend? I am well. You know, we are in this journey, so we just yes. keep going. But That's also, right. I, I celebrate you, though, Mr. L.A. Mm, Williams, with what you, you do. It's, it's important. You know, the, mm. the voice, that's why I'm delirious right now, but I was yeah. like, I have to do this. So, I'm so glad you said are. yes. I'm yes. going to get into a deeper introduction of you in a minute, but before I do, I want to take a couple seconds, if it's okay with you, to talk about what Celebrate is and what it means to me. Great. This series is a manifestation of a moment I have had as a very young theater student at Alabama State University. It was my first time in the theater seeing a show. I knew nothing about drama, theater, acting, any of it. And I had gone over to the building to see a production of a play called Phaedra by Jean Racine. And it was directed by Professor Dr. Tommy Stewart. And it was one of those moments, one of those experiences where I was completely uh, overtaken. And I was like, oh my God, I belong in the theater and I want to do this for the rest of my life. But the other thing I really remember, Charles, about that experience was that I needed to say thank you to everybody involved in that production. I needed to go and find the people that, whose name was in the program and be like, thank you so much for inspiring me, for changing my life, for giving me this experience. I needed to say thank you. And that truly was the genesis of Celebrate. Um, skip forward to a couple years later, I'm living in New York City and I decide I have this sort of divine inspiration to turn that feeling into an interview platform where I sit down with folks like you and I say thank you, but I also listen to them talk about some of the transformative moments in their journey, right? What were some of those experiences that made you say this is what I want to do? Um, and here we are 10 years later, we're in 2022, as you just mentioned, we are journeying through this journey together, you know, we are pulling through. And I made a personal decision last fall to go out and see shows and just like support all the theater people who were out there doing shows and being what I consider to be heroes, right? Putting their bodies and their lives on the front line, literally to bring us art and inspiration. And that's when I happened upon, oh hey God, I can't even think about it, Charles. Ugh. <laughs> I can't even think about it without even having this whole like, Ugh. but that's when I happened on, yeah. Hmm. Your gorgeous, uh, mm, mm. Mm, gorgeous and stunning, Charles, production uh, of Alice Childress's Trouble in Mind. Baby, you directed that show. Do you hear me? Mm. You directed that show, Charles. And I'm, 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 I'm going to say a few, a few more things about you and your work. Oh, and we'll talk about Trouble later. But Charles, my friend, the reason why I invited you to be here today is because Trouble in Mind took me over. It reminded me of that experience I had at Alabama State University, where I was sitting there and I thought, I got to find everybody and say thank you, because this has shifted something inside me as an artist and as a human being. Eh! So that's the reason why I asked you to be here, but I want to give a little bit more context. Charles, you are extra special because I had the same kind of experience years earlier before when I saw your production of Motown. Mm. Oh. I was, I had just, I'd only been in New York just a couple years and I had gone to see the show and I was like, yeah, Motown, no, 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 the music. And I specifically remember that moment during that sitting in the audience where I was weeping. It might be the first time in my life, Charles, and I'm not kidding around when I say, I think I wept in the middle of a show. And it was the moment when young Michael came out on stage and he just, it was like his introduction moment. And I just wept because I couldn't believe the experience I was having. I couldn't believe what was happening with the audience. It was so transcendent. And so, and then since I've gone to see, you know, Born This Way at Arena Stage in DC. So I followed you, I followed your work. And this mm -hmm. moment today is about me loving on you, celebrating you, thanking you and giving you your flowers. Charles, you are a gift. Hey. You are a legend, you are a giant, you have worked, you have paved the way for me and so many others, black and white and otherwise. And I just wanted to have a moment to love on you and it might get a little uncomfortable today, but I'm gonna be saying thank you a million <laughs> times. And that is why I wanted you to be here and why I'm so honored that you said yes. Okay, bye. <laughs> <laughs> All right. what, what do I say after that? Oh my God. What do I say after that? Thank you, LA. Thank you. Mm. 
Ah, mm. uh, there's so many things. So many. So things. many things. Yes. So many things. Yes. Thank you, and you are very welcome. And I am so full. So thank you for receiving all of that. Like, oh, I've been wanting to say it to you in this way for so long. So thank you for receiving it. Um, the way I like to start these celebrate conversations off is by asking you or saying to us, let's start by celebrating the day you were born. And that question or idea is meant to have you take us back as far as you want us to go to wherever you want us to go and talk about you know, your, either your birth story, your earliest memory or growing up or anything you want us to, to know or talk about. I was born August 26th. So mm. I'm a Virgo and I'm definitely mm. a Virgo, whatever that means, right? <laughs> yeah. And in York, South Carolina, mm. a small town south of Charlotte, tiny mm. town cows still graze in the city mm, limits mm, mm. um i have i had an amazing activist mother and mm. she always complained because she said i came feet first and i think that's <laughs> that's quite appropriate you know <laughs> jumping in having to jump mm. in all these pools mm. you know mm. um not knowing how to swim in these pools but mm. being thrown mm. in the deep end and mm. doing what mm. you need to do so mm. I, I i was born that way so mm -hmm, it mm -hmm, is that. Mm -hmm. And I think the thing, a memory that I've shared often is that when I first started school and actually sort of a kindergarten school, when mm -hmm. I was about four or five years old, my mother said to me, you make an A or an F. Mm -hmm. There is no average in this family. Ooh, make ooh. A statement, there is no C. Mm -hmm. So imagine that's how I began my life. Mm -hmm. So the gray area to me is, is very depressing. The mm. idea of mm. failure is not necessarily failure. If mm. you if you do everything that you believed in, and I've had many, but mm -hmm. I believed in those failures. So mm -hmm. that's, to me, it's a success for me, even though in the world it may have been a failure. I believed mm -hmm. in it. If I mm -hmm. don't believe in something, that's, that's a failure. That's a failure. That's so a failure. when I started my, you know, my education, mm. this activist mother of mine said, you mm. make a statement, there is no average. And so mm. that's how I grew up. I had permission from my family to be the very best and mm. they expected nothing less than that. Mm. So growing up in this tiny town in South Carolina to have that kind of permission is how is it, I was able to do what I've done. I mean, mm. it's highly unlikely for me to have the career I have growing up where I did. Mm -hmm. it, it's highly unlikely that someone, because certain voices get the attention and mm -hmm. other voices are not seen. And mm -hmm. I'm definitely one of those voices that they would not see. Mm -hmm. But I had the infrastructure of family, of adopted mm -hmm. family that mm -hmm. pushed me and mm -hmm. said, you can do this. Mm -hmm. And I think the most important thing to me was that um, the attempt was more important than anything else. The mm -hmm. pursuit of the dream is mm -hmm. more important than the dream. Everybody mm -hmm. focuses on the mm -hmm. dream, mm -hmm. but the pursuit is everything because that dream may not be the thing. It's that's the right. Pursuit. It's the pursuit. And so that's my constant, and I must constantly remind myself mm -hmm. of that, you know, mm -hmm. because the as as my career happened, things have not gotten easier. Mm -hmm. We still fight the same battles and mm -hmm. we'll, we'll talk about that, mm -hmm. I'm sure. Mm -hmm. But the early life is, is this, you know, I grew up in a segregated community. I went mm -hmm. to an all black school until I was in high school. Mm -hmm. You know, it was, and again, I, I come from a long line of activists. So they were always protesting, mm -hmm. always. Mm -hmm. I was at marches as a little kid. I was around. Mm -hmm main people who are a part of movements, my mm. relatives in Atlanta, my relatives all over. So mm. social justice has always been the forefront of me. And I, of, I've always equated social justice mm. with the church. Mm. So I've always been involved in churches that are about social justice. Mm. And now I go to middle collegiate church, mm -hmm. which is the ultimate social justice place. And mm. that's how I function. You know, mm. and I would often say to people too, you know, you really need to go to church when you're successful. Mm -hmm. You know, everyone runs and throws themselves at, themselves at the foot of the cross when things are 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 not working and things That's are right. bad. And of course, you need that family and that world, but you need it. You need it even more when things are happening positively. So you realize mm -hmm. it's not just you. 
Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, the yeah. shoulders upon which you stand, how that happened, mm-hmm. all of that. Because ego, all of that makes you start doing that. You mentioned trouble in mind, and I'll just seg a little bit about it. Mm-hmm. The thing that was so magical about that production mm-hmm. for every single one of us, from me, from the producers to me, down to the house staff that worked mm-hmm. on that production, mm-hmm. is they wanted this success for Alice Childress, yes. who never got it in her lifetime. Yes, yes, and yes. the fact, and I've spent decades mm. trying to make that happen mm-hmm. and to to have done that mm. is my someone said i said listen i'm good you know mm-hmm. if right. i don't ever do anything anything else, else to have done that production for me was i it was everything it took me mm. 15 years to get roundabout mm-hmm. to do it mm-hmm. but i first read it in college but mm-hmm. well i know you want to go back to that later. totally but yeah alice is such a part of my journey because she was born in south carolina mm-hmm. you know in charleston literally mm-hmm. almost down the street from my relatives mm-hmm. I, I understand what that upbringing is mm-hmm. what that world is what was instilled in her but then she moved to new york and it was the harlem mm-hmm. renaissance and it was mm-hmm. that era and what happened mm-hmm. with her and her words i first read trouble in mind in college that's four mm-hmm. decades ago mm-hmm. and it spoke to me in a way that none mm-hmm. of the other plays i was reading mm-hmm. spoke to me mm-hmm. you know and Tennessee Williams speaks to me, as does, you know, as does O'Neill and all of them, mm-hmm. as does, you know, um, the tragedies and Shakespeare and mm-hmm. all of this. But Alice jumped in my spirit and mm-hmm. never left. And never you know? left. And never and left. And so when we did this, she just jumped out over that stage. We yes, just she felt did. her everywhere. Oof. And we yes. were in our first day on stage rehearsing mm, mm. and someone pulled up because we were so in it, we didn't even realize it. Our first day on stage of Trouble in Mind was mm-hmm. Alice Childress's birthday. Mm. And we just went, oh, she's here. She is she totally is here. She is absolutely here. Yeah. So that's uh, mm. women like Alice Childress, women like my mother and men in my family who were extraordinary. But there were these strong Southern Black goddesses who mm. just resonated and just lifted me. My mm. grandmother was so mm. extraordinary. She died at 99 mm. and she was just this embodiment of mm-hmm. spirit and mm. and I have to think of them when I do something that's off when I feel oh why did I say that or why did I do mm. that or whatever mm-hmm. it's just I pulled them I pull that what they gave me the foundation mm. and the foundation of church was very my spiritual you know you can call it spiritual you can call it religious but that grounding for me is how I function it's how mm. I how I I traverse these waters that Mm -hmm. I thought would get much simpler. Mm -hmm. I thought it would shift, Mm -hmm. you know, I Mm -hmm. thought, you know, years ago that, oh, this will get better. Mm -hmm. And it has changed. Mm -hmm. I hope it has changed for the better, Mm -hmm. but it's still, it's still very difficult. Yeah. And, and the journey you will have and so many will have, and I hope it shifts, but I want you to have equality Mm -hmm. with your white counterparts Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and you have never had that and i know that because Mm -hmm. if you had you'd be directing broadway right now Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. let's just place it let's just place it (laughs) let's just place it where is that you know i never have had equality with my Mm -hmm. counterparts and Mm -hmm. that to i don't know how you keep pushing and keep Mm -hmm. fighting without Mm -hmm. a foundation Mm -hmm. without and you stumble Mm-hmm. You do things you should not do mm-hmm. and you figure out how to forgive yourself mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and to forgive that and keep going. And forgiveness is very difficult because, again, with that upbringing, I've always tried to be perfect. Mm-hmm. It's like mm-hmm. I have to be perfect. I have to mm-hmm. be better than. And one of my most difficult lessons was to say it's okay. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. it's okay not to be perfect you can't it's okay be, not to be perfect you know right but that's i i love the part of it that drives me mm-hmm. but the part of me that punishes and disappoints mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. and the expectations and mm-hmm. all of that you know mm-hmm. you have to learn how to how to how to place those and yes. and forgive yourself mm-hmm. you do something mm-hmm. wrong you do something that 
that you should not have done. You, you, you take a job that you think, why did I do this job? I mean, I've been very fortunate career wise mm-hmm. that I knew how to say, Maurice Hines laughs all the time because he says, you say no faster than anybody I know <laughs> because I will. That's I won't right. take a job just because it's, it may be a Broadway job, but if it's not the job for me, I'm not going to do it. Right, and now right. with the television career I have, I get, I, I've gotten so many offers that I never, ever expected. Mm. And one recently that's a film and the studio with the film were saying, you know, wanted me to sign a three picture deal. And I said, mm-hmm. no. Mm-hmm. And, and a friend of mine said, did you just hear yourself? <laughs> but I said, I don't want to make the movies they want me to make. That's right. You know, that's right. I would have done that at 30. Right. <laughs> but, right. You know, I, I'm right. twice that. I'm not doing I'm fully that grown. Now. I'm fully I'm grown. Yeah. Fully, fully grown. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to do that now. Yeah. You know, yeah. but yeah. I guess the magic of it was I wouldn't do it then either. You know, and that's, that's the it. thing that that's I'm, the foundation. Yeah, that's the foundation. And if you weren't, I was very fortunate, and I thank God for my family mm-hmm. and my town because they gave mm-hmm. me this grounding. And I always, I was talking to students yesterday. I said, if you don't have that, if you didn't have that, find that. Mm-hmm. You can create that. You family can create it. Absolutely. That you find that in, yes, God. and and you also have to shift. You know, all those, all my my landmarks, those people that did that for me, they're all gone now. Yeah. You know, they haven't seen, they didn't get to see this, That's you know, right. they That's haven't right. seen, they, they pushed me toward it. They sent me out there, but they've not seen what I was able. My mother seeing trouble in mine would have been everything for me, mm-hmm. you know? And so oh, you will not start this with me. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that, mm-hmm. you know, and I just imagined one night that she was there and I could hear her. I could hear her laughing. I could hear the respect, the acknowledgement of of women like her who were not acknowledged. I just felt it. And that was the thing that we all felt through this. We'll talk about the goddess Lashans later oh, too, gosh. but 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 the that acknowledgement, that that clarity she mm. brought of all those women who suffered and struggled and pushed and kept doing it. She embodied all of them. Yes, and so did. I saw my mother and my grandmother and my aunts and all of them, you know, I yes. saw them in her. Yes, and, yes. And I felt people in the audience That's seeing right. that. See it as you know? well, yeah, yeah. Um, when you came, you were so, <laughs> your response to this show, I, I said to the people watching, I was like, Ellie, can you come back, please? <laughs> I was like, I need, I needed that because, you know, you get delirious in creation. Mm-hmm, totally. And you saw one of the first shows. I did, and yeah. Your, just the things, and there are different things that you responded to that no one else mm-hmm. did. You know, mm-hmm. things that you got. And I was mm-hmm. just like, oh, it helped me breathe. Mm-hmm. Who helps you breathe? Yeah! Because you forget. You forget. Mm-hmm. You forget. You get you so crazy. Mm-hmm. You know, you get pushed down this mm-hmm. road so mm-hmm. hard. And I just keep trying like it's like, what do you want? I want to breathe. I want to breathe. I want to Lord. sleep at night. Oh God. You know? Oh God. And Charles. so how do I do that? Hmm. How how am I how how am I the person that can do that? What do I how do I do the right things to be able to do that? Hmm. You know, how hmm. do I forgive others, forgive hmm. myself? That's right. All of those things. Because That's right. because of what we do and 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 that's that's the place I'm trying to be. That's the place yeah. I'm trying to be. Charles, thank you. You have brought tears to my eyes. Thank you so much for that beautiful, open sharing, very generous sharing. Um, yes, yes, yes to all of that. Um, I wanna, I'm present to a couple of little things, few things that I wanna go back to in the sort of upbringing journey really quickly. One, just talk to me about, were you the only child? Like what was the structure of your household? And then I wanna know at what point or when did you realize that like I'm an artist and I wanna like be a performing artist? Like, Right, Um, you jumping in, huh? Okay. (laughs) Um, um, My uh, my parents divorced when I was young and I'm I'm an only child. Okay, But I grew up across the street from my father's father Okay. So I had that presence. So it wasn't mm. as if it, he, 
he moved out of, of he lived in Washington, D.C. So even though that presence, my grandfather was an extraordinary man. And um, and so my relatives were all around me. And ironically, um, my father and mother both had huge families mm. and almost all of them had only children mm. or just two children. Mm. None of them had more than two. So mm. all of us ended up being siblings. Mm. And um, so I had an only child upbringing, mm -hmm. but I also had the advantage. I wasn't I wasn't um, insular. You know, right. I, yes. I did have, it was the advantage of being an only child that I could yeah. go home and not share my stuff. Right? <laughs> but exactly. It was, <laughs> but it was, um, I did have family mm -hmm. that I had to, um, mm. you know, that I reacted with, you know, was yes, that yes, so yes, that I did have. Um, and, um, as I said, my mother was an English teacher and a profound influence. I mean, mm. She read Macbeth to me as a baby. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, the witches, I remember <laughs> so clearly mm -hmm. from the time I could hear it. She was mm -hmm. all about literature. I mean, mm -hmm. when my mom died, when my mom passed and we had the funeral, and I have to tell you a B.B. Wynan story about that. But when my mother <laughs> died and the funeral, um, people, she would, she, the Canterbury Tales, she made Black students back in the day when the schools were segregated, mm. learned it in old English. Mm. Uh, and, and they were reciting things. I had mm. people, they were reciting poems that, from decades ago mm. that my mother crossed in Shakespeare, the Greeks. I mean, just all of that. So mm -hmm. the, it, and, and I told her years later, cause I went to college to be a doctor and mm. ended up shifting. Mm. And I told her, I said, this is your fault. You gave art to me <laughs> from the, from the from minute the I was born. Beginning. Yeah. And then I was in, I was a musician. I played trumpet in the high school band mm. and it was one of those Southern, you were mm. in Alabama. So, you know, mm -hmm. it was one of those Southern championship bands mm -hmm. and we competed. And mm -hmm. that's where I found my art. Mm -hmm. And that expressed to me different mm. things. And then you would see something Again, there's so many circles. Mm -hmm. I remember there was a show called Rock Concert that was on late night television. Mm. And I would, I was supposed to be asleep and I would get up and turn it, you know, and have the sound down really low mm -hmm. and watch Rock Concert, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You know, and one night these three black women dressed in bird suits came mm. out of the ceiling, mm. descended from the ceiling, mm. and did this song. And I lost my mind. Mm. It was LaBelle. <laughs> yes. So Patty, Nona, and Sarah, the mm. three of them, it was just, I, mm. I, I had this transformation, which is a Nona song that mm. I can't even describe. I remember mm. every single inch of that. And mm. fast forward, who is the person that I have collaborated the most on music mm -hmm. in my career mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. the Nona Hendrix. Who the Nona Hendrix. Is, you must, and Nona, it, it's, I've never, mm. you talk about artists, she has, mm. she mm. has done everything mm. there is. Mm. I mean, it's just astounding. We went to see American Utopia the other mm -hmm. night. Mm -hmm. And then, so we're leaving, which I loved. And we're <laughs> leaving and Nona said, oh, we're going to meet David at, you know, Bar Centralia. And I was like, excuse me, you know, <laughs> so I'm there. And, but Nona has worked with mm -hmm. everyone. Springsteen, David mm -hmm. Byrne, you know, mm -hmm. Robert, you know, and, I mean, name, name all of these people, yeah. George Clinton. There's an mm. interview of Nona and George Clinton where he talks mm. about being abducted by aliens. Mm. That is one of the funniest mm. things mm. I have ever seen and thrilling things I've ever seen in my life because these artists, and there's so many like Nona mm. who, who mm -hmm. they didn't know where to place them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You couldn't place them in a category because Nona right. defies category. She defies, so yeah. that's when I talk about my chosen family, mm -hmm. that's Nona Hendrix, who has mm -hmm. worked, you know, did music for Trouble in Mind, mm -hmm. but has done, did music for my first film, did music mm -hmm. on all my television shows, mm -hmm. did music for my state. Everything, we have mm -hmm. had this relationship mm -hmm. that has crossed every style of music and yes. every part of this to have that in your family mm. and, and people, and she always says, I'm her little brother and people actually think, but I am, I am. Mm -hmm. So That's right. that, but so I, those moments seeing that 
Michael Jackson. Mm -hmm. I completely the seeing the Jackson Five on 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 Ed Sullivan. Mm -hmm. I remember so clearly. I think mm -hmm. the Jackson Five album was the first album that I bought, and I mm -hmm. said album. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> album. Yes, album. Exactly. <laughs> you know that. So again, Barry Gordy, I was mm. obsessed with because mm. it's one of the few images we had of someone of color mm -hmm. in power yes. who owned, who had his own business, and right. no one told him what to do. Right. That. And then he went from music to television to film mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. all of that. And so mm -hmm. again. My circle years later, being able to work with Mr. Gordy, who I'm in touch with constantly. I mean, mm -hmm. he became such a father figure to mm -hmm. me, but was a father father figure mm -hmm. to me when I was growing up. Exactly. And then to have this circle, mm -hmm. and it's interesting as I talk about my family. My father had four sisters who were stunning, mm -hmm. and I remember in the house at, on the mantle, the fireplace mantle, there were these four pictures of them, each one just done, you know, like a studio <laughs> picture. Yes. And that was like 50s, you know? Yes, like yeah, these pictures yeah. that they took in the mm. 50s and 60s. And I mean, they were, I mean, extraordinary. And you don't see us like that from that mm, era, but I right. never saw them, um, they were dressed uh, impeccably mm. every day I, mm. I've ever, that I saw them mm. and he had these four sisters. And then when I started, um, before I even met Mr. Gordy, I was reading his, his bio again, cause I'd read it. And there mm. was this picture of, of his four sisters and it was mm -hmm. like on a mantle. And I just, mm. I told him about that. I just said, I, I understand because they weren't my sisters, they were my aunts, but they were that, in, that was, it was that spirit. That spirit, yeah. And, and yeah. I completely got it. And mm -hmm. he and I just had this symbiosis in so many mm -hmm. ways of, mm -hmm. of what, of things that I felt and, and things about art and what it is and how you mm -hmm. do it. And I just, mm -hmm. the relationship. So for me with Motown, it was very important that I created the show that Barry Gordy wanted, mm -hmm, not the mm -hmm. show that Charles Randolph Wright wanted, mm -hmm. not my experience of mm -hmm. Motown, because that mm -hmm. is different. Mm -hmm. You know, as a director, LA, mm -hmm. when you're dealing with that, I wanted to create the show that he wanted. And not that I didn't love, I loved what that was, but it was mm -hmm. very important to me to take his vision, vision. you know, and place that, and that vision and put it there. Yes. Yeah. on the stage for us. But that it, it remained his vision. So but it remained his vision. Uh, so all these moments in my, uh, which I didn't realize, but all these seminal moments growing mm -hmm. up for me mm -hmm. have 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 been complete circles. Yeah. And and in college, another circle was I was studying to be a doctor. Mm. I was in an organic chemistry lab. Mm -hmm. My roommate came in and said, "I have tickets for this show, this traveling show this afternoon, but my girlfriend's sick." And I said, please get me out of this fucking lab, right? So, um, <laughs> great. So yes. I um, I left and I walked in and I sat down and it was the show Pippin and mm. it completely mm. blew my mind mm. because the character in the Ben Vereen role, I'd never mm. seen a black character do that. Mm. He was in charge. Mm -hmm. He was this person that was mm. larger than life that mm. orchestrated everything. Mm. And it was just... And also as existentialist, and I was in the height of my existentialism, mm -hmm, reading mm -hmm. all Camus and Sartre and all mm -hmm, these, you know, mm -hmm, John Barth, and then reading mm -hmm, the Renaissance. I mean, it was like mm -hmm, all the things I was mm -hmm, reading. Um, because when you look back at Richard Wright and all these authors mm -hmm, and, and from that time and the things that they put underneath and around mm -hmm, all of that, it's a different mm -hmm, thing. It's mm -hmm. not what I thought it was when I first mm -hmm, read them. Mm -hmm. So reading those those books when I it was like Pippin was that on stage mm. and when I went to New York um I came to New York like right after I graduated and Ben Vereen had gone back into Pippin before it closed mm. in the mm. Imperial Theater and mm. I bought a real ticket with my mm. no money mm -hmm. and I remember I'll never forget <laughs> sitting 10th row center and watching mm. him do Pippin right completely uh, one of the moments I'll never forget. So 
Fast forward a few years mm. later, mm -hmm. I'm in the original company of Dream Girls mm -hmm. on Broadway. Mm -hmm. I am literally the first man out on stage. And the way mm -hmm. the show happened, you know, we come out and we look out in the audience because we're at mm -hmm. the Apollo and mm -hmm. we're looking out and seeing who's there. And mm -hmm. I look out in the audience and Ben Vereen is yeah. sitting yeah. in 10th row center. Oh my God. Not 10th row center. 10th row center. 10th row center. Yes. Mm. And then I ended up meeting him after that. And then he became, you know, not just a friend, a mentor, all of this. He's in two of my movies. I've worked mm. with him in so many mm -hmm. different things and, and he became mm -hmm. family. But again, mm. he was my inspiration in college mm. to think, you know what? I have got to try this. I've got to mm -hmm. try art. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I have to try it. If it fails, yeah. I can go back. I'm one of the ones. Med school was my fallback. Yes, it's exactly, so, exactly. Like I can go do that later. Mm -hmm. I can't always do this. Can I mm -hmm. do this? And I graduated, I went to Duke and I graduated mm -hmm. a semester early, went mm -hmm. to New York, got in mm -hmm. med schools, mm -hmm. which would have been that fall. And I said, if mm -hmm. I get that sign, mm -hmm. I'm not doing it. That's and I right. went and they started, it was the first summer that they did stock productions of mm -hmm. what? Pippin. Mm -hmm. And I got to play the leading player. My first job was leading player in Pippin. So it was... You know those worlds, the connections. Mm, how the you connections. don't don't sleep on that. You know, don't sleep on don't it. Don't sleep, sleep on, on it. Everything is all happening. The yes, yes, yes. All, and all, that yeah. you absorb every single thing. Yes, yes. That you look at every single every thing single and, thing and absorb touch it. it. Yeah. Yes, yeah. So that's the so the the journey. Those are all the different parts of the journey that made me yes. realize I'm an artist and yes. different performers. I was obsessed with Sidney Poitier, of course, mm, mm -hmm. you know, and so watching him because those movies were on and everyone would go, oh, it's a Sidney Poitier movie on television. Mm -hmm. You'd run and watch. Mm -hmm. I mean, I grew up in the days when they would, you'd say somebody blacks on TV and you would yeah. run and look. Run. And yes. Run. Oh, so, wow. Um, mm. Maurice Hines, the Hines mm -hmm. brothers, mm -hmm. being on Johnny Carson, mm -hmm. being able to stay up late. Mm -hmm. Then Maurice ending up being somebody for me and what that meant, mm -hmm. being a mentor for me when I first started, mm -hmm. then me, then ending up directing him. And mm -hmm. now the movie that we just did that I mm -hmm. produced about him that won the New York Doc Film Festival. Mm -hmm. I mean, ah, uh, you know, yeah. and I wanted so badly to have Maurice's journey on stage, mm -hmm. you know, I wanted to film it for mm -hmm. those that came after because we mm -hmm. lost Gregory and mm -hmm. I wanted that journey and having this film of him now, like people, like people who will, that you affect, that will come after mm -hmm. you, you can say, watch, mm -hmm. bring them back. Watch That's somebody right. who did this years ago. That's who right. Was, who was himself. Maurice mm -hmm. has always been his own mm -hmm. entity, mm -hmm. unlike mm -hmm. anyone else. Mm -hmm. And Maurice is one of the people, mm -hmm. and all these people who gave me the courage mm -hmm. to do that. Yes, to, right. To, to go my own path, even mm -hmm. though, maybe someone else is not ahead of me in that mm -hmm. path just to mm -hmm. go because if i go down that path and it's wrong i can i can turn around that's right i can turn around yeah i can turn around it's hard <laughs> but i can turn around you no know, but i can turn around and so i've had to as i talk to you i think about all these people mm. who were so mm. amazing in my mm. journey that mm. that that gave me mm -hmm. the the will mm -hmm. to keep going mm -hmm. when i wanted to quit mm -hmm. and please you you want to quit almost every day every day every you know? day <laughs> so we have to know yeah. that everyone no matter what level it is right it's, just, it's that job uh, it's that yeah. struggle i keep thinking yes. will the struggle get any easier will it get any easier yeah you know um ooh, charles whoa um, You're making me go it, off. I'm sorry. No, stop no, it, stop it. no, no. Please keep going. I huh. just um, I want to make sure I'm taking my moments to stop and celebrate what you're saying and what you're sharing the f i mean there's so many things that i am tracking in that epic epic journey first of all like you talk about the circles and the connections and the sort of full circles are so brilliant and so important to acknowledge so thank you for introducing that language into the space of like how it all is connected um the second thing i want to point out is the fact that i'm present to just the the fact that like you were so instrumental it sounds like or seems to me in making those circles connect, right? So you had the Ben Vereen moment of inspiration, you had the Maurice but and the Barry Gordy, but you somehow, and I don't know what this is and I'm not asking, but like you, 
you made your way to like being connected with those people, right? So it wasn't just like I saw a performance and I really loved them, but you, it, it came so full circle to the point to where you have relationships with those people. And I think that speaks to um, uh, the divinity of your journey, how divine your journey is, but also like something about you. Hmm. There's something about you as a spirit, as an energy, as a, a hardworking person who's like, I'm going to, I don't know. I'm, I'm again, I'm trying to figure out what it is about what I'm tracking in your journey of how you made sure that you were able to connect and tell the stories of these people who had inspired you so greatly. It's just, it's a testament to you is what I'm trying to say, mm -hmm. um, some way and somehow. Um, the other thing, um, I love that you've already talked us through high school and being in the band, which I love the idea of that. Um, thank you for reminding me a of like Southern. Yes, a big afro. Yes, I love that. little, um, you know, and that yes, little cap. That the, the little cap, that. yes. <laughs> and as a person who went to an HBCU, um, yes. you just reminded me of like, like you said, um, you know. marching bands. I know what that is. Yeah. Um, but the only thing I'm, I'm curious about uh, in your undergraduate journey at Duke, you were studying <laughs> medical school, mm -hmm. um, studying chemistry. You graduated a semester early. What did, did uh, Dream Girls is what I'm getting at. When did you get Dream Girls? Like how was it after Pippin or how did you get into Dream it, Girls? That was after Pippin. Pippin was okay. the first um, thing. But uh, backing up, there was, I tell this story at Duke often where I was, so my, you know, my first year I did everything. I was miserable because mm -hmm. there was no art, right? I, um, and I was doing everything <clears throat> that I was supposed to. So then, mm -hmm. The set, my, my sophomore year, I found out that the choir was going to Disney World. And mm. I thought, oh, I'm going to join the choir. I want to go to Disney World, right? <laughs> Not <laughs> to join the choir. I wanted to go to, I Disney. Want to go to Disney World. And I told them, I said, when I'm going to go to Disney World and after we get back, I'm going to quit, right? Mm. And so, mm -hmm. and after we got back from Disney World, I quit. I quit. But prior to that, <laughs> I was, um, <laughs> we were singing a piece in the Duke Chapel, this huge mm, chapel, mm. and we were singing, and there was a woman named Mary Trent Siemens, who mm, is a mm, Duke, Mary Biddle mm. Duke Trent Siemens, full name, and she was beyond a patron of the mm, arts, I mean, mm, she was a Duke, she was mm, like this, 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 I can't even describe mm. the, how the outreach, you know, her mm -hmm. arms. Mm -hmm. And she saw me singing in the choir because there were what, two people of color in the choir. Mm -hmm. and she came up to me and said, who are you? You know, and we started talking and I, she said, what do you, and I said, I'm going to be a doctor. She said, no, you're not, come to my office. <laughs> and, and I was like, I had no idea who she was. It was this white woman with huge hair, you know, because mm -hmm. you know, she's Southern, mm -hmm. huge hair. <laughs> I had no idea hair. and I went, Behind my dorm was the music building, mm. which was named after her, which I didn't mm. realize. Mm. And so I go in the building with her name on mm. it. On it. And she's sitting there and she calls. She says, I want you to meet a friend of mine. She calls London, which completely freaked me out, mm -hmm. and called this person, ended up getting me in a program. And I went to London my junior year to study, mm. which is the big shift in my mm. life because it showed me a whole other world that I had no idea of. Wow. You know? I was specifically, for example, and there were students from all over the world in this program mm -hmm. that, that studied. And we got to study with the Royal Shakespeare Company. We got to mm -hmm. study with different people. And it was at the time where every, every major actor, Albert Fennick, Derry Jacoby, my, I mean, all of them were in the Royal Shakespeare Company. Mm -hmm. Roger Rees, who was a dear friend of mine who passed recently, all these people were in that company and we would watch them in shows like mm -hmm. two, three times a week. We, we would see these, the greatest actors of all time, wow. you know, working and watching this. And we did a production with us, with students where we, and it was a small production that we did. It was The Tempest and I was chosen to be Ferdinand, which floored mm. me because mm. that was the young lover. Mm -hmm. Whereas if it had been in the States, I'd be Caliban the slave. Mm -hmm. And mm. that's when I went, oh, you know, I, I remember going to see the Duchess of Malfi at Rada, at the Royal mm. Academy. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the woman playing the Duchess was black. Mm. And I thought, it, it, it stunned me because I thought in the States it would be the Black Duchess of Malfi, right? Right, As opposed yes. to her. So there, when you talk about things, that was that first circle mm. of shifting images 
Mm. Why do we have to be in a certain role? Why can't we be this? Why can't mm -hmm. we, you know, because they were mm. comfortable with placing you in certain things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So how, how do we shift that? And I remember um, being in London, I was 20 years old and mm -hmm. like taking, going to see shows and always going up the escalators in London in the tube station and seeing all these posters for shows because mm -hmm. they're always there. And I, would, mm -hmm. and I remember always thinking, one day I'm going to have a poster here. Mm -hmm. One day I'm going to have a poster here. And mm -hmm. that was my thought, which passed me by for six, 40 years. Mm -hmm. And I'm, in, I'm rehearsing Motown and I go up the escalator one night and the Motown poster is in the subway. Hey, God. And I just went, oh, my God. Mm -hmm. Mm. You know, mm. years ago, that manifest destiny years ago, yes, I said, I'm yes. going to have a poster. It was just my, my, that energy. It took yes. me much longer than I expected, yeah. but I, but it was there those and you got to were see everywhere, it. You yes. Know? And you got to see it. And, the best and that, that, that energy of, of mm -hmm. again. So when you talk about this, I think my fear of not doing something is greater than my fear of doing, of doing something. So, so jumping in and trying it, yes, I'm afraid, but I'm more afraid of not doing it. That's so right. that's how I would just jump into something I didn't know. Mr. Gordy tells his story that when I first, I met him first on the phone, but then when I met him in person, because we were talking for about 10 minutes and he said, wait a minute, you black? Because he had met all these <laughs> white directors, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he said, wait a minute, you black? <laughs> I said, yes. I said, but you know, I'm, I'm interviewing. I'm using my white voice. You know? <laughs> and we just, oh my God, we screamed. And he said, <sighs> right then, he was like, I, I have to meet I, him. I got to right? meet this person. So we were, I, I said, if let me get in Barry Gordy's house. Now, mm -hmm. I may not get the job, but I was in Barry Gordy's house. Right? That's right. So That's I right. go for the meeting with him. And then this meeting says to me, he says, so why, why should I choose you? He said, You've never done a big Broadway musical before. And I said, neither have you. Hey. And, and he was like, and he tells this all the time. And I still to this day think, how did I say that to Barry Gordy? <laughs> how did I? Because he needed to hear it. <laughs> I know that, but, but the, the idea. And we would have things where I would be arguing with him about something like, mm -hmm. no, I don't like that song. I don't think we need that. And it was never an argument, but it was this like heated conversation and, forth, yeah. and right in the middle of it i'd go i am here arguing with barry gordy and then i'd jump back in <laughs> and, and, and it was one of the great experiences of my life wow. you know to have that wow. in his wow. his view and he would just say things one thing specifically because i was trying to make something happen and i couldn't and he just mm. stopped me we were walking on his compound from one building to another and mm -hmm. he stopped me he grabbed me i'll never forget this and he says you have to remember um, direction is more important than speed. Mm. And I just, and then that shifted how I directed the show. Oh. You know, oh. find what's right, do what this is. And again, with his view, this is not the Charles Randolph version of this. This is Barry Gordy's Barry's Motown. Version. That's if I do the show that he wants, I don't, I'm, that's that's what I that's, that was my job that's what yes, I wanted to that's do. what you wanted to do I love that yeah. thank you so much for um celebrating Barry in this moment um and Motown and talking about that production as much as you are I, I, that production again was so seminal for me as a young director being in the city and just going to Broadway those were my some of my first experiences on Broadway Charles, what y'all did was so profound. I, mm. I, I just, I, I remember again, weeping in the middle of the show because I had never experienced a moment in the theater where the entire audience was truly on the same breath, right? Mm. And having the same exact experience. And it was because of Barry and his music and that music of Motown. And no matter where you are from, and that was right. a part of what I was experiencing, I don't, give a, I don't care about none of it, right? right? That Motown is like, it is, it is everything. It is global. It is all of us. And, and so thank you again for, for, for acknowledging um, Barry and the genius that is Barry. And I love that, what he said about direction versus speed. Eh, that's so juicy. That's so <laughs> juicy. Um, it, it, okay. It stays with me, you know? I mean, gosh, how can it not? Um, I'm curious to have you talk a little bit about your entrance into the professional directing work. 
professional directing world in New York or however that started for you? What was that journey like? Let's celebrate that for a couple Very seconds. Specifically, it started during Dreamgirls because everyone mm -hmm. at those in those days, you had all these nightclubs where people would do their nightclub shows at night mm -hmm. after mm -hmm. the show. Mm -hmm. You know, it was all these different Sweetwaters, Reno Sweeney, Grand Finale, mm -hmm. these clubs, mm -hmm. and people would go do their shows there. Mm -hmm. And um, I started directing people's nightclub acts. And one mm -hmm. specifically, mm -hmm that that shifted me was this actress terry burrell and mm. we did an outrageous show that people literally still talk about that was mm. just beyond what a nightclub show was mm -hmm, it was this mm -hmm. storyline and things and just and she sang every and she sang every type of music in it and we just mm. got to be ourselves mm -hmm. and i loved that and mm -hmm. i often say you know my my journey as an actor um, I loved being an act. I loved acting, mm -hmm. but I hated being an actor. Absolutely. I didn't like how I was treated and what that would mean. And mm -hmm. also that I had zero control, you mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. that I couldn't tell the stories I wanted to tell during that time frame for me, 80s, mm -hmm. to be young and Black, you were either in jail, out of jail, or go away. Mm -hmm. I mean, those were the roles. Those were the roles. And I just said, that's not who I am. That's not what right. I want to portray. Right. I want to right. see my family. I want to see these different, you know, I want other things. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and people obviously love trauma porn. And I said, mm -hmm. I'm not going to do that. LaShawn yeah. said something great. She said, I want to see Black drama, not Black trauma. And, that's it. And, and that was very important to me back then because I mm -hmm. saw that road and I would sell something, I would sell a screenplay, but they wouldn't make it because it mm -hmm. didn't fit in mm -hmm. to the sensibility, <clears throat> the world. Right. But um, as an actor on television, I was on several television shows and I would always hang out with the crew mm -hmm. and I would stay or come early and mm -hmm. watch what they were doing. Mm -hmm. And that was my film school, mm -hmm. you know, um, mm -hmm. that I was, and then Felicia Rashad was in Dreamgirls with mm -hmm. us. And Felicia mm -hmm. said that I would, you know, I, I was always watching Michael Bennett and she mm -hmm. says that Michael Bennett would watch me because mm -hmm. I was too naive to mm -hmm. tell him that I didn't like something. Mm -hmm. Like he said, what do you think about that? I said, no, I, they should come from there. It doesn't, I would say this and everybody else would gasp because it's like, <laughs> you don't say this to Michael Bennett, right? Right. But I just had this, um, mm -hmm. I, I've just always had mm -hmm. this vision, I guess. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. Michael Bennett, the way he directed the show just really taught me it mm. was my grounding that yeah. was watching yeah. him because I was in workshops, several workshops and watching yeah. him make this happen, yes. watching him pull this all together. And then the show itself, how he did it and what that was and being a part of that and working with the tremendous actors who were in the dream girls family mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. all of us discovering, I mean, in the course, my first act partner, in the chorus was Vanessa Bell Calloway. And wow. my second act partner was Felicia Rashad. Oh my so God. We were in the oh chorus. In the know? chorus. Yeah. And LaShawn's and I were laughing about because I was in the chorus on Broadway and LaShawn's was in the chorus on the road. And we said, mm. she was like, look at it, look at the chorus children. Look, look at the at chorus us. children. Look at the chorus you know? children. Because I'm proud of, yes. of the of course, uh, what we call that yes. that gutter rat of the course. That's right. <laughs> I am proud <clears throat> of what that is and what mm, that was. And mm. we don't even need to go into the understudy conversation about how right. much I love what that is and people yes. finally being yes. recognized because that's yes. what kept us open. Absolutely. You know, we would have closed, but those are, <clears throat> you know, the understudies were so ready and so talented. Mm -hmm. And yeah. And and I'm I'm thrilled that that acknowledgement that is so necessary is finally, so necessary. It's so finally. Happy sort of happening yeah you know finally sort of happening yeah that's yes. great charles um thank you for that thank you for that history and um yeah thank you for that L before i shift into celebrating a few more things i want to make sure i acknowledge and celebrate something you said a lot earlier in the conversation about your parents and your family and that solid foundation it is not lost on me it should not be lost on anybody i celebrate the fact that you had that support and that grounding that you talked about um and that support in your community it's so vital is what i'm finding um through these conversations and also so not the case for everyone so i just want to make sure i as the sort of moderator of this conversation celebrate 
the fact that you had that. Um, and 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 I want to transition into celebrating hey, God trouble in <laughs> mind. Uh, Charles, let me tell you. And 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 and, and I, this is more so a thank you and some acknowledgments, but I want to acknowledge the fact, something you said earlier that cannot be skipped over. Eh. The fact that you spent as much of your life, my friend, eh, that's what they don't get. I get it, but they don't really understand. People, who, unlike you and I, they don't understand the investment, the commitment, the life force energy it takes to advocate for something and to sit behind something for 15 years. That don't run past me. I catch all of it. And I want to say thank you and congratulations, but also like, Golly, I see that. We see that, Charles. And you absolutely, as you've already touched on, you could feel it in your production. But golly, that is not to be skipped over. That is did not, not to be skipped golly. over. You golly. Hey, I'm so, uh, I'm <laughs> Ooh, all baby, over that things. Is so country. Yes, that's the that's woods. So country. God. Ooh, I'm from woods. You just took the me back, back roads, to the woods. baby. Golly. I'm telling oh, you. Dirt roads. Them dirt roads, child. With I know trailers up at the top of the hill. Listen. Listen, golly. And, and I just want to let you know, Charles, like, and I remember thinking and feeling that while watching the show, and I don't know if I knew the exact amount of years, but I knew that a part of the story was that you had been behind this play and tried to make it happen. I don't know if I read it in the program or heard it. But anyway, so I just want to acknowledge that and celebrate that because that is real. And it makes sense to me why you say, LA, if I don't do nothing else, I'm good. Well, I mean, what? I'm surprised if you have anything else left to give. <laughs> <laughs> that's 15 years okay so that's that um also jesus christ that cast Oof. i don't know i don't know charles all i can say is everything that you've talked about today and all of the women that you talked about and and the embodiment that lashans and the cat everything was just so alive and well and present on that stage I, I i felt like i and alice was there do you hear me she was truly there and i saw it twice because you did ask me to come back and i came back <laughs> happily um and 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 it was just yeah it was reinforced everything i experienced the first time was just reinforced um so yeah trouble in mind trouble in mind congratulations charles i mean what a legacy to leave my friend <laughs> what what outstanding brilliant work and I want, I want you, my friend, I'm getting so emotional and tingly inside because my prayer when I think of you is that you always know and trust, Charles. Hey, God, what you have done with trouble in mind. Wow. You brought a, a play that did not have a chance all these years ago. You made it happen by standing by it, sticking by it, and then directing the dog meat out of it. Hmm. Here's a line in the play. Well, oh, I hope I can say it because every night when Lasan said this, I it would go through my body. Mm -hmm. And it's near the end of the play. And she says, I always wanted to do something real grand in the theater. Yes, God. To stand up here and be at my best. Yeah. Lordy. And every night when she did that, I thought that was LaShawn's doing it. That was yes. Alice doing it. Yes, God. That was me doing it. That yes. was every actor that was doing it. That was me every, doing it. It's, it's you, it was all of us to doing everybody. something grand in the theater where we yeah. got to stand up and be at our best because we don't get to do that, you know? And, don't get to, and do that. to be able to do that with that company, when you talk about, you talk about lightning and a bottle, you talk about magic, every single person, oh. you know? as well as the understudies, they were magic. They and were. I just, I, I just, I mean, we're on a, a chain now. I mean, we, we I've never been with a group of people. They're always texting each other because everybody's in shows. So, ooh, just watched Ozark. Ooh, just yeah, watched yeah. Miss Maisel. Ooh, yeah. just watched Gilded yeah. Age. I mean, they're yeah. just, just loving on yeah. each other. How yeah. great to have that you don't get yeah. to have that kind that's of right. experience that's right that kind of love that kind of and i still have those kinds of relationships mm -hmm. with people in dream girls yeah with the maurice hineses yeah. with, with the ben Vereens, you know that yeah uh, and yeah. especially to the younger people that watch this creating those families yeah. those relationships and as you said go pursuing those and not again not being afraid to pursue them yes, as opposed and to thinking yes. 
oh, I just need to step back, you know? Exactly, and, Charles. And, and that's exactly yes. what I was trying to say earlier. Thank yeah. you for giving me yes. words. That's what I was trying to say about your ability to connect and foster and cultivate the relationships with these people is an art and is so beautiful. And I think it comes probably as rooted from the fact that just your upbringing, your family and that support in that community. I don't know, it's just all so gorgeous. Um, I, wanna, I wanna take a moment to just call out some names from this gorgeous production. And you talk about that brilliant moment um, where LaShawn's, um, her character says, I wanted to do something grand in the theater. But honey, that moment was also directed, honey. I, direction is not <laughs> lost on me. You can't sneak direction past me. I understand uh, it. Uh, I can uh, read it. Uh, I can see uh, it. I can uh, smell it and I can taste it. Okay. Uh, and I remember I can see it in my mind. And I said, oh, this moment was crafted. Eh! It was crafted. So I, you can't, again, you can't get it past me. So celebrate to you. And mm. let me tell you that LaShawn's. Mm, 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 well, it was, it was meant to be, you know, I mean, he, <sighs> on so many levels when you think career as first of all everyone was floored when she did this interview and said as a lead actress on broadway i was her first black director in 35 mm. years on broadway, mm. right? oh right i did see now, that yeah her first job ironically maurice hines directed her mm. it was a show that was on broadway very briefly but mm -hmm. she was in the chorus of that with mm -hmm. maurice hines mm -hmm. and that was that was her first i think her first broadway job mm -hmm. but starting with her as T Moon, mm -hmm. all these iconic mm -hmm. black women that mm -hmm. she's played all mm -hmm. these years on mm -hmm. stage, mm -hmm. um, I'm the only one of color that's guided her in that journey. Guided her in that. Imagine journey. what that, what that, and she and I just, mm -hmm. I, I, mm -hmm. I, the experience I had with her is I can't even. There, there are not enough words. Yeah, so absolutely. I, I, it would be the middle of the night, and I would think of something, <laughs> and I was like, "Oh, I can't call her." It, it, she's calling me. I mean, we just, we, we always, yes. we wouldn't even communicate. We didn't even mm -hmm. speak at a certain point. I yeah. would walk toward and walk toward her and she would just do it. It was, she would just and, do, yeah. and the entire company had mm. that, but she mm. led that company. She it led was, that company. And also this is the first time she was, and we just keep laughing because Brenda Braxton says this, she was above the tighter, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> so, oh, as Brenda says, but she was, it was LaShawn's in Trouble mm -hmm, in mind. Mm -hmm. oh, yes. How she deserves. Yes, that. she deserves that. How she. And it was. And, and how she Ooh. took those reins and mm -hmm. just did mm -hmm. the work. It, it is one of my greatest experiences in the theater that I will never, ever forget. And what I think, and our, the only disappointment in this was that I think, you know, the actors were saying any other time, given the response, given all of this, we would have moved or would have run longer or could have mm -hmm. been extended. I mean, mm -hmm. with the roundabout, which is, a, you know, like MTC and Lincoln Center are, totally. are you know, limited runs, mm -hmm. but we would have had a, another run. But I said, you know, any other time, I don't know if people would have heard this. That's right. That's right. That's right. Because, you That's know, they right. didn't hear it 66 years That's ago. That's right. They wanted to make her change it. And right. so 66 years later, we are still dealing with every issue in this play. Every and I can't issue. tell you how many people said, you had to rewrite some of this. Yeah, you had I to- I can imagine, it. yeah. Not one, one word. word. Down to the actors going, uh, er. I mean, she wrote, I mean, in the she, script, everything. And I always kept saying, what did she think? Yeah. Why did she say this? Yeah. What does this mean? Because yeah. we didn't have her to ask yeah. what things were. So we really went through that journey mm -hmm. of playing with this. and. Also with those actors, how she, you know, all these scenes that were overlapping and how, you know, and it was like, what did she want you to hear? Yes. Even though she's giving you that at the same time. Yes. Like all of those things. But the main thing is I wanted Alice Childress recognized as a great playwright. I wanted yes. her to yes. be in the canon of great playwrights. And yeah. that's why I wanted this at the roundabout because the mm -hmm. roundabout does great they revive plays from great playwrights. And Absolutely. I wanted her to be recognized. And that's what we did. That's she exactly now what you did. Is in the canon. And yes. people are doing her work everywhere. Yes, and trouble in mind is now everywhere. Yeah. Will be recognized. And that that was that was my goal. That was my mm -hmm. journey from first mm -hmm. reading this at Duke University mm -hmm. with the Black theater group called Karamu. Of course, mm -hmm. we mm -hmm. did a little piece of this, mm -hmm. you know. And it, her words 
have been with me my entire career. Mm -hmm. So to actually place them on stage. And after my play Blue was at the roundabout, I joined the, they asked me to be on the board of the roundabout. And Mm -hmm. I'd started this program called Different Voices where different Mm -hmm. artists, we were a reading series that we would do. And this was one of the first things we read. And Mm -hmm. that's what started, which is now more than 15 years, but that's what started this journey. And I just kept pushing. You know, oh, thank up God. the hill, pushing thank that God. rock. Up the, pushing oh. the rock up the hill. And it, it's personal, on a personal note, um, thank you because I, yeah, just as a director who has also championed playwrights and a single playwright, you know, your Alice Childress is my pearl clay. I mean, I worked very hard to get her play Blues for an Alabama Sky to Broadway, I'm sorry, to New York off Broadway. And it happened right before the pandemic shut down. Uh, shut us down um and so anyway just seeing another person have that journey again i know it from the inside um and i just i just thank you for being a great wonderful example charles um i want to shift because you and i can go on i could i, I, I can know, have you have it'll to. be 6 p.m tonight we'll still be talking <laughs> I have to go. Um, I have to go to my TV life. You know exactly. So. Exactly. <laughs> I want to. Uh, uh, I want to move towards the finish line with um, just asking in the spirit of fun and lightheartedness. And what are some of your favorite things? Just like what are some of the things that make you happy, or you enjoy your favorite city, or your favorite food, or oh, so, uh, the first thing that was as soon as you said that is art. Mm-hmm. Instead of going to shows, mm-hmm. I go to museums. Museums, mm-hmm. and whatever mm-hmm. city I'm in, I have mm-hmm. to go to museum. And Mm -hmm. I cannot pass a cathedral or a church without going in. It's Mm -hmm. something, you know how Waletta comes into the theater in the beginning Mm -hmm. of Trouble in Mind and and she says, the theater always makes me feel this way. It's that, Mm -hmm. it's like, Mm -hmm. I I want, Mm -hmm. I have this feeling Mm -hmm. whenever I go into Mm -hmm. a a church, a theater, Mm -hmm. these spaces, I love that, Mm -hmm. but I love museums. Mm -hmm. I love to see the work Mm -hmm. of artists. I collect art, it's just really, it, it's it's everything to me. Yeah. Um, I've not been able to go to my favorite country and my favorite cities in mm. several years, which mm. is Brazil. Mm. And um, Salvador Bahia takes my mm. breath away, mm. as does Rio. And mm. they both of those cities are a second home for me. Mm. And I would always go, because everyone after Trouble in Mind said, oh my God, you would be I went to Brazil for a month after Motown because mm-hmm. I had to, you know, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. for many reasons. Mm-hmm. Um, but the um, there's there's something there that just on so many levels, the plane lands and I breathe mm-hmm. and people mm-hmm. think I'm Brazilian. Mm-hmm. So I escape, you know, especially in Bahia because they think I'm Afro-Brasileiro. And I just mm-hmm. I have this whole world there mm-hmm. that more than anything makes me grateful oh, and God, that's the thing yes. that that i have um you know i talk a lot about trouble in mind i've said in different things it is so hard to be grateful and bitter at the same at time at the same time <laughs> and that is my journey i am mm. so why did it take me this long oh thank god i'm doing it but why did <clears throat> it take this long you know it's that so yeah. how do you do that and esperar in, in Portuguese. It's like when I get there, I literally, I used to, it's been several years, I would breathe, you know? Yes. But obviously because of the pandemic and different things, I've not been able to go. I've had my friends from there have come here, but it was that I also love London, one of my favorite mm-hmm. places because mm-hmm. London is what changed me as a 20 year old, you know? Mm-hmm. It was my grounding, it, it mm-hmm. taught me. I lived in London <clears throat> before I lived in New York. Mm-hmm. So, I had this other other energy. I learned the difference between um, colonization and slavery. Yeah, and, and that's another. We should have that mm-hmm. whole conversation. Mm, that's a whole about nother, what yeah. That means yes, and and our journeys and why mm-hmm. people are apt to deal with Britain British mm-hmm. before. Yeah, there's so many things. There's so much in there, and yeah. so being able to work there and live there, and 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 I have my established family in London, mm-hmm. like one, somebody just wrote me recently, when are you coming home? Because I haven't, <laughs> literally tomorrow will be two years because one of the other, in the circle journey, one mm-hmm. of the other things, the young Vic was a theater that had just started in London when I was there, you know, mm-hmm. studying, you know, mm-hmm. as a 20 year old and mm-hmm. it blew me away. And mm-hmm. I was like, one day I have to work with the young Vic. Yeah. So yeah. what happens, Kwame ends up taking over the young Vic mm-hmm. and, mm-hmm. and last, and so in, 
March of 2020, we started rehearsals for a project that was then called Orpheus, which was a house music opera mm. written by this opera singer Inman Ford, but it was all mm. house music and all opera mm. singers. Mm. And it was the two weeks of rehearsal that we did before we had to shut down again, mm-hmm. beyond glorious. It was mm-hmm. just that thing, which mm-hmm. we will do again, but it mm-hmm. was, and then we had to shut down. And on March 17th, two years ago, we, Inman and I won one of the last flights back to, to the US you wow. know, because of the pandemic. So mm-hmm. that, 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 that will happen again. It's called House of Orpheus. Um, mm-hmm. And that will happen again. But it is, is an extraordinary piece mm-hmm. of working with the people we were working on. So that's, I love London. I love everything about it because I'm mm-hmm. my 20 year old self. Mm-hmm. Like I'll turn a corner and I'm 20 yeah. again, you know? Yes. And, oh. and, and I found mm-hmm. new appreciation because I shot this TV series, Delilah in Charlotte, which mm-hmm. is, you know, where I'm from. Cause I grew mm-hmm. up South of Charlotte in South mm-hmm. Carolina. And I have this newfound appreciation for my home to yeah. go back and work there, yeah. which I never, yeah. ever expected. Yes. Yeah. You know? So uh, I, all of this, so all of these different things. And I think again, it's the, as to end with that, it's the gratitude. You know, I did an interview where, um, uh, uh, they said, you know, all the shows happening and all the plays and it was in the, it said, are you, ex- are you optimistic? I said, no, mm. <laughs> immediately. I said, and the interviewer, white interviewer, of course, mm. just the face I said, I said, but I realized, you know, just before this interview that I'm going to be anti-pessimistic. That's right. So, because being an anti-pessimist, I still have hope. Yes. My problem with being an optimist is that I'm exhausted of mm. the expectations and the work. And do I believe things? Do I, I said, I'll say, do I hope things are changing? Yes. You know, I want this journey to be easier for you. Mm-hmm. I, I hope that the doors we tried to kick down, you know, they shut again, they will close mm-hmm. again and mm-hmm. they will, but I hope you, it'll be easier for you to kick them open mm-hmm. and you have more people like me that you can mm-hmm. talk to mm-hmm. about it because we must help mm-hmm. each other because we That's don't, right. we haven't done that, you know, as much as we should because they put us in a box. Mm-hmm. They separate us and there's something about being because when they put you in a box, then they know how to ignore you. Mm. So the mm. point is, how do you break out of that? Mm. How do you do all the mm. things you want mm. to do? Mm-hmm. When people would say, are you a producer? Are you a director or a writer or a producer? I say, yes. Yes. Do right. you work in film, television, or theater? Yes. Yes. Why can't I do that? Right. Why can't anyone that's watching do that? You that's know, right. how do you get that permission? So my being now your, your, your papa, your big brother, your whatever, mm-hmm. with your uncle, whatever you want to mm-hmm. call it, you mm-hmm. know, I want us, I, I hope that we can help all of you because I mm-hmm. see, I do have hope with mm-hmm. all of you. I mm-hmm. do have hope in the promise of what is coming, mm-hmm. but I do know how difficult that journey is. And I don't mm-hmm. want people to be fooled that that journey is any different. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I bet it is still going to be that journey hopefully surprise me that that journey will be easier you know, and lighter. I hope mm. that I'm surprised by that, but I, I, I hope that I, my hope is that I can help it. Yeah. The yeah. way that people did help me, yes. you know, yeah. that I can also be helpful in that because it is not easy, but mm. oh my God, is it worth it? Yeah. You know? And we, go as artists in the middle of what I call two pandemics, because there's a health mm. pandemic and mm-hmm. a race pandemic. That's right. Um, how do we help that? We are artists, we can help heal. That's and right. And I want especially my people to that's heal. Right. We that's need right. this so badly. We, need we do. You know, so that's, that's what, and I saw that happen with Alice. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so, mm-hmm. if, as I said, I'm, I'm good. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> Oh my God, <clears throat> Charles, thank you for that. We are artists and therefore we are doctors. We are healers. We yes. can heal. I love that. Um, so much in there. Um, I like to end these interviews or sort of wrap them up with three questions. The first one being, what does it mean to you to be celebrated? 
as soon as you said that, is to celebrate others. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My, I, I hope that my celebration can help others also be celebrated. Mm -hmm. Love that. I really love that so much. Ooh, that's juicy. What or who do you celebrate? Oh, all, so many of the, the, especially the artists who came before mm -hmm. me, mm -hmm. who had it, you know, much harder than mm -hmm. I have, mm -hmm. who, and Alice, who did not get her due, that is, mm -hmm. that is attaining it now. Mm -hmm. Anona mm -hmm. Hendricks, who has been mm -hmm. acknowledged, but not the way she should be. Mm -hmm. Nona Hendricks is a goddess. Yes. The Maurice yes. Hines, is the, all of those people yes. who I have had such a thrill and pleasure to work mm -hmm. with, mm -hmm. but who are not placed on the category of their mm -hmm. counterparts, who mm -hmm. are not recognized as such. Mm -hmm. I want them again. I mm -hmm. want them celebrated mm -hmm. because then mm -hmm. I'm then I'm full. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm so full that. because of what they gave me. Oh my yes. God. Yes. How do I thank them? How do you thank yeah. their, their faith, their push, their all of this that I received from so many people? I have to, you know, celebrate. I must celebrate them. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you for celebrating them in this space and evoking their spirits and their names and that those energies. And I agree with you about every single one of them. <laughs> ben Vereen, I'm just so glad that they are in, they are part of this party that you and I are having today. Thank yeah. you for that. Um, and finally, Charles, what do you do to celebrate you? A, I breathe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I try to take time where I let this go. As you know, I don't have a big social media presence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think part of that helps me. You know, I understand the necessity for that, but I'm, mm -hmm. I'm going to let you have that. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> okay. Pop, I'm giving that to you. <laughs> um, to find the peace that comes with gratitude, mm -hmm. you know, and to find, because I'm so busy still, you know, being, mm -hmm. being as old as I am, mm -hmm. I'm still so far too active. Mm. But, you know, to find that stillness that is in, in grace. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so my church gives me that. <sighs> my church community gives me that. Mm -hmm. Music, oh, mm -hmm. music just, just transforms mm -hmm. me. Whenever that is, when I have something mm -hmm. that's difficult, I had a roommate in Los Angeles years ago mm -hmm. that she would walk in and if Leontine Price was playing, she was like, ooh. Let me not talk to Charles right now, <laughs> right? right? Because I right. had to, mm -hmm. you know, I use those things to ground myself, mm -hmm. you know, and mm -hmm. to, and to be, because you have to have that to be able to walk out the door. Yeah. Some, there are just times you don't want to do it. You got to have it just to get out of bed. It. That's to right. Get out of bed. Yeah. You don't want to face it. So that's right. I, 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 that, those are my tools, you know, my prayers. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know? My, yes, just God. that 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 gratitude that that mm. whatever that is that's that's for me how i mm. Mm. how i try to breathe and i fail mm. you know mm -hmm. and i just mm -hmm. and i try not to beat myself up that i fail Absolutely. that's that's right. that's that's hard that's you know? hard that's hard yeah oh thank you for all of that charles i celebrate you i love you i have so much um respect for you i'm so thrilled for you. You deserve everything and beyond and so much more. Um, I feel so honored, Charles, that we got to have this conversation and for that I got a chance to tell you in my own way. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for Trouble in Mind. Thank you for Motown. Thank you for Born This Way. Thank you for every single thing, Dreams Girl, Dream Girls, everything you have done, things that we know about, things we don't know about. Thank you, hey God, for what you have done for Alice and therefore us. Mm. We needed this play. We needed that production. We needed, we need Alice's words. We need everything that Alice embodies and stands for. And you, my friend, were the shepherd and the mm. vessel. Mm. Mm. And I just wanted you to know mm. that if ain't nobody told you today, <laughs> that we are grateful for you. And I think I speak for so many. And Thank you to your incredible team. 
uh, your designers, your actors, everybody on that production stage management. It was a stunning, stunning experience that transformed me. And I am forever, ever changed and grateful. Thank oh, you, my friend. I'm so glad we did this, Charles. I'm the so honored. final circle for you, as you said that, and I just thought the person that told Alice she should start writing was Sidney Poitier. Mm. And so now I'm, you know, my next project is a project about him. And mm -hmm. so to be that, that's that, that circle, even the from circle. Alice, just yeah. think of the circles. And so I say that because I will say, we won't say what it is, but you and I are about to work on something. <laughs> that's right. And so I will get to celebrate you. Mm -hmm. And I want to do that mm -hmm. and pass this baton. Cause I told you I'm tired. Baton, I know. I'm passing. <laughs> <laughs> no. Thank you well, so much, Ellie. You're very welcome, Charles. Thank you. I love you, brother. Take good care, and I'll speak to you very, very soon. Oh, yes. Love you too. All bye right. Bye. bye.